Hinkins? Here. Bogle? Here. Triplet? Here. Bower Sox? Here. Sires? Yes. A motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seeing none. Moving on. Anyone in the audience here for any agenda, any items that are not on the agenda? All right, so we'll move on. A motion to approve the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting minutes for October 17th, 2016. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Or Anybody opposed? Okay. Move on to item number six, Lost Lake Estates. Um, a and B. Madam Chair, thank you. I'm going to start this off. I understand Jared Murray yep. is here as well, so maybe able to answer your questions. I'm going to do kind of three and four together, or A and B, if you will. Um, a preliminary plat was approved by City Council on this. On June 27th of 2016, uh, there's 69 single-family lots that are involved here. Plat 3 is 30, and the other 39 are in Plat 4. The um, zoning for this is R1A, restricted. There is 14.2 acres in Plat 3 and 15.89 acres in Plat 4. There are no review comments that um, our city engineer had. Laura is pinch hitting for Kathleen. So is able to answer any questions. The legal documents will be forthcoming after this meeting. They're usually not at the PNZ meeting, and we will be receiving those over the next couple of days for <coughs> this plat. Um, and the public improvements acceptance may be uh, may come after the council actually approves uh, the final plat, uh, probably on. Uh, December 12th due to um, the holiday weekend and um, the timing of our city council. And Jared, I turn it over to you, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Not much to add to it. <coughs> yes, additionally, we provided detention in the rear of these few lots here to restrict any water on going onto the core ground. For that, they're trying to direct most of it down to these lots down here, which actually go across Broadway Street and down the opposite direction. Um, like Gary said, we extended utilities through the plats. I don't know that there's too much more to add. All comments have been addressed. Do you guys have any questions? We, we tend to have a lot more questions on the preliminary plat than we do in the final. Yeah, so. makes sense. <laughs> I have a question for you, Laura. Okay. <laughs> it's a real simple one. When you have a minimum lot width of 80 feet, how do you calculate that, like when the front yard is 70 feet? Like on a cul-de-sac? Well, uh, any place on this plot, there's, you know, the pie shape on the cul-de-sac, but there's other places where it's 70 feet, I just, on the front yard. And of course, it gets wider, but when it says it's a minimum of 80 uh, feet, it's always think? measured at the front yard setback line. Well, then, why do we have a minimum? <coughs> we have a minute, if I'm thinking this right. Has to, if it's a minimum 80 feet, it has to be at least 80 feet or larger, right? Yes. Well, if it's pie shaped, you could have a frontage that touches the street that's narrower. Uh -huh. And then by the time as it increases in width, as as you go back to the front yard setback, you can meet that 80. 80 so it's at the setback. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. I got you. Okay. So that dimension really isn't given on, on uh, at all. So 
We were looking at that at the preliminary plat stage, and I'm sure Kathleen has verified that um, dimension as they move forward into final plotting. Okay. Well, <coughs> it appears kind of, it's kind of tight here. Sometimes the front yard setback is increased, and that should be noted on the plat. Um, you got a lot, let's sit a lot under three on here as an example. In flat three? Yeah, and, um, and maybe, maybe, oh. even, maybe even a lot two where it's uh, about 70 feet in front. And I don't know, I'm not so sure it's really 80 feet. There's a lot when I have small <coughs> Do you have, a, you have an engineer yeah, scale? Do. Um, I don't know if I have if, that there. If you have an engineer scale, you could put that on there and see okay. that. Okay, let's see if I draw I think the only there. thing they did, though, was have a 30-foot setback, and I think that's all. Which ones are you Okay. The setback there. line is noted there. Let's see. Four. 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 Five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six. Sixty-four foot. Yeah, those. Yeah, I, you know, I, I couldn't put a scale on on the curve really. Well, um, we'll verify that, but that is something that we routinely check and look into. So, yes, well, I, I, it's on every one of these plans that's presented tonight. There's, there's. It's a very common thing to that any lots on a curve. Some of those lots have. You know, a smaller frontage, but do yes. They do you do. have an engineer scale with you? I don't. I should have brought mine. These these plans aren't 100 percent accurate when you print them. They they should they should be. They're, yeah, they should be to scale. Uh, well, yeah, but they're not. They change. I've been doing this for 50 years. Um, there are some <laughs> engineers that. Don't always print your plans to yeah. scale, but it, it, it's not much. It, it doesn't change much, but when you go through the printing process, it, it sometimes makes it smaller. So it's that's why you never put a scale on a drawing. So. Right. Put it on lot three, Gary. One to forty. Right at 80. All right. <clears throat> then they probably all are. Okay. I was just curious because I always looked at the front yard or the property. And then we call <coughs> it 80 and then it looked like it was going on. Sometimes when they get very narrow, the setback is increased, but it is something that we typically check. You check it. But you, I mean, somebody else should when they do Um. In some cases, I've done that, but on this particular plot, I didn't personally do that. Thanks, I appreciate that. I'm not questioning anybody whether it's wrong or not. I just always see that it's 67 feet and it's 80 feet from the moment. And it's kind of, but that's in our ordinance. So it's in the setback. Yes. Good. Thanks. Yeah. I guess that's We should probably take okay. those two separate. I make a motion to recommend the approval of the final plat for Lost Lake Estates Plat 3. Second the motion. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bowersox? <coughs> yes. Sires? Sires. Now, um, I, 
I'm just wondering if, if the motion would also say that with the recommendations that are you know, <coughs> official. So sure. I, I like to make that for, uh, addition if we could. Sure. And then maybe we have to revoke it. Or not. Would you, well, are you taking that as a friendly amendment? Then, um, and so with that as a friendly amendment, you should probably call the roll again. Okay. Do I have to start with? Start at beginning. Okay. Yeah. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bowersock? Yes. Sires? Yes. Number, or <clears throat> Make a motion to recommend the approval of the final plan for Lost Lakes Estate Plan 4, including the addition of the recommendations for, for the city engineer. I'll second the motion. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bowersox? Yes. Sires? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on to item number seven, Lake Ridge Heights. Consider a motion to recommend approval of final plat for Lake Ridge Heights platform. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is slightly unusual in that it falls outside of the Polk City corporate limits, but does fall within the two mile of Polk City's corporate limits, and therefore allows the city to have input on it. City Council met on this on July 25th and approved it. Uh, that'd be 2016 on the preliminary plat. Um, Basically, the utilities are not ours. Um, the the um, roads will be the county, so the county will be putting their input in as well. Uh, Des Moines Water Works will um, supply the area with water. Um, for the most part, this is um, all we're really looking at is does this fit within our zoning ordinance if we were to ever annex it and this plays very well with our R1 zoning and uh, would be a natural so it, we would not have any non-conformances with that. I'm not sure who's here to speak on this. Cliff McClure, I'm a real estate developer. I'm here to answer any questions. Foot wide lots on that 140 foot. Okay. Yep. And so when you get to a cul de sac, like you two or these two, this just for my application, so I understand it. Uh, they are 62 feet at the property line at the front. So if it has the same loading as it should have, and I'm looking at lots. 21, 22, and then they get the dimension on the surface, B2, B3, B4 of 62 feet. And at that dash line, well, the, the, the longer line? dash line, the, the one that's furthest away from the center of the cul-de-sac, yeah. that had would be where you measure that's your. That's the 50. That's the 50 front yard setback. Back. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, lot 22, if you just measure straight across, is scaling at about 130 feet in width. 
Okay, from straight across. Yeah. 100 and what? 30. Okay. And if you measure straight across on the property line, what's that measure? Is that 62? Yes. Okay. So it's easily 140. Because it's, it's on a curve, right? It's on a curve. Okay, great. That answers one question. Thanks. Make a, a motion to uh, approve the final plant review of Lake Ridge Heights pursuant to the recommendation. Sires? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bower Socks? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Woodhaven, Flat 2, I believe. Um, that's right. Um, Jared will be for that one, too. Um, this was in front of the City Council as a preliminary plat for the whole area that was done in April 22, 2013. Uh, since then, Woodhaven, Plat 1 has been done. Plat 2 is before you tonight. Plat 3 is future. Uh, the full plat had 93 single family residential lots. And the final plat for Woodhaven Plat 1 was October 28, 2013. Construction drawings for Plat 2 were approved by City Council on June 23rd. Plat 2 includes 15 single lot family single family lots all on Lindell Street. Uh, start of construction was September 20th, 2016. Um, the final plat has all the review comments answered and addressed. And uh, Jared Murray with CDA is here to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have seen plats one and two of Deerhaven come through. Um, we have not seen final plats on those yet, but we've seen preliminary plats. Um, there are plat three is um, an area that um, we didn't often think would be able to be uh, utilized, but uh, the engineer has found a way to make this uh, usable and workable. There are four lots in Plat 3, and um, they were all front on Broad East Broadway. The uh, 
review comments are listed in your memo. Uh, most of these, from what I understand, have been addressed today uh, by um, conversations back and forth with the engineers. That's true. Yes. Um, I don't know who's here. Yes. Okay. And we should note that this is a, they're proposing a rural road section instead of an urban street section on that part of the existing East Broadway. Meaning gravel? No, meaning no that there's no curb. Meaning not improving from its current status, is that? It would be improving with ditches and that type of thing, but would not be, um, it would not have an urban section. Okay. Uh, with um, cur with um, curb and gutter. So there would be no gutter. I'm sorry. No there gutter. there'd be okay. no gutter. And and this is a dead end road, really only serving those four homes and the treatment facility. And right, the pump station and um, lift station. The Mary Burton parcel. And the Mary Burton parcel, which is right across the street. Is there a coal sack then down there? Uh, there's somewhat of one uh, way down at the end, um, partly gravel, partly not. Um, East Broadway used to be um, Highway 415 back in its day, and um, when Highway 415 changed alignment, uh, this was what the city was given back in the 60s. Um, there is room for turnaround down there. Uh, they've had large trucks down there. And when we had uh, flooding concerns in 2008 and 2010, we used the turnaround area, as much as you could call it a turnaround area, as a staging area. So there's plenty of room down there. But it doesn't have to be paved. It's, it's um, gravel. The city has never paved it. So it would be the city's responsibility to do it? Yes, it would be, because it's outside even uh, the scope of um, Deerhaven. And is the slope okay? Looks like there's a lot of change there for snow removal and that kind of stuff. There's a SUDAT uh, requirement on slopes for things. It looks pretty happy. Um, for the slope of the road or the? Yeah, slope of the road. Some of this might be deceptive on the roadway slope, um, just with the scale and of the drawing. Um, but let me just quickly and measure. Let's let Justin. I'm Justin from Cooper Property and Associates. So, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them as well. I do know that when we were grading the front part of the lots, we kept it so the rec trail won't exceed five percent. So. If that helps give a kind of an idea of what the grade is right along there, so so the lots are at five percent. Oh, just where that rec trail is, the very front, oh, where you see everything up here towards the front, towards like twenty feet of the lot. The area. Yeah, the You're middle. talking about this area right here. Correct. The right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a five percent here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then. We will be putting in, there's conditions in there that they have to put in uh, driveways and ditches and also a little culvert under the driveways to chin water. So. Mm -hmm. Where would the houses be built? I mean, where's the building? Oh, we have, there's a setback line in there. It's 30 feet from the front. It, I know it's at this scale, it gets a little messy in there. But I can come up there and show you if you want. No problem. It's like a needle in a haystack. Okay, right there. So more than the building in here. Oh, okay. In fact, that this far back 35 foot setback line is different now. Um, it was one of the comments that they had on there, and we've since put individual setbacks on each of the lots that range from 75 feet to 120 feet to make sure the rear setbacks are within the range of the fire hydrant. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, look at all his face back there. What's that? That's the face of the ark. We went above the, I, I know the 100 year flood is the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. yes. But didn't we exceed that in 2000 or whatever it was? We got to an 849. Uh, 849 is when our wastewater treatment plant is going to overflow if we don't take action. We took action and um, literally we wouldn't have had to because the water started going down at the time. So 850 seems to be a good mark for us in 2008 and was also a good mark for us in 2010. But the reason I know that is the berm, for some reason, is only 849. And the 100-year flood elevation is 850. Those numbers are entrenched <laughs> in here. Can somebody buy flood insurance? Yes. On that? Yes. Without the city passing something? Or city has already passed. We we're, we're in the program. Okay. All right. So those lots, if those individuals wanted to, could buy flood insurance? Yes, they can. Okay. That's very good questions. And so the bike trail on this is in front of the houses? It's a future trail. Okay. Um, what we set up for easements so the trail can be made in the future. But yes, there's a there's an easement set along the the frontage of the lots, and then also on the eastern edge of the eastern lot, so the trail can go up and continue on for future development if that happens. So, so just a question here. Mm -hmm. um, let's take lot four, which I don't know, eight fifty four back there, kind of towards the back. Mm -hmm. Is that as low as they can build the basement floor? Can they build the basement floor before? There should below be 54. Should be down here. They yeah, have an MBE, minimum basement elevation. Or minimum and floor. where's that at? Right, uh, right down the middle. Right oh, okay. Right. So we have those, oh, okay. we have those uh, set up for that, each individual lot. So they they can build it below yeah. the But that's also, gonna, that's also going to be up the hill past where that flood would go. Okay, we got an 848 here mm -hmm. on lot four. So that's um, foot and a half below, approximately, the flood. That's 100, yeah. No. That's okay. It, if they, it, it, it's, it is because we have the MOE of 851. And that's the minimum, that's an elevation of an opening, so an opening cannot be any lower than 851. Okay. So they can have, as long as they have a uh, continuously poured concrete wall and their um, lowest. Actually, I think if you have part of your lot in the floodplain, you cannot have your finished floor below that floodplain okay. elevation. We can definitely raise that. That's yeah, and it's going to be governed by your sewer elevation anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sorry. To okay, I did not. No, that's fine. Well, we can make that change. I'm glad you're So, that that'll sure. need to be amended. That's fine. That's why I brought some plans with me. Okay. 851. I just get concerned about people buy a lot. They don't know any of this. That's they don't ask, me, they don't ask me questions. <laughs> and nobody's selling it to them, tells them about it. <laughs> Normal. Well, that's the last thing you want is water. And then they come back here and want to sue the city because the city knew about it. They tell them about it. No, I'm blaming. If, the, if okay. any part of that lot is in the floodplain per se, then that's the case. 
So <clears throat> if we pass this tonight, you'll get that corrected. If if it needs to be corrected, we will okay. make sure it's corrected. Okay. Thank you. Question. When you remind me again regarding the park, was this whole thing originally designated as park or just this portion? The um, the portion that is um, over there in uh, plat the, the first plat that's in out lot X, and then there's an out lot. Excuse me, there's lot A, which is a park that was that's all dedicated already. Will be dedicated. Let me put it that way because we haven't done the final plats with these. What was one, two, three, and four originally? Was that just no man's land? I mean. The, 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 the whole area? Yeah. The whole area was at one time a farm, uh, Colton Hauser Farm, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Bradshaw Farm. And um, it's been farmland for just about ever. Um, the um, plats Plat. one and two. Designated this as an outlaw. Des an outlot, that's yes. okay. And then. Yeah, that was what I was wondering. It was separated from the lot A that was to be dedicated to require to fulfill the parkland dedication requirement. And or offering. And essentially, lot A is I mean usable essentially. Well, from my understanding, talking with Chris, that was already set aside for the park. I mean, there's no plans. I really have a concern here that on lot four, um, you know, I think you've done some things where there's a buildable area where you've, it looks like you've filled in mm -hmm. on one, two, and three. And I'm just asking, is there any possibility that at least what you've done on three could be filled in and extended over to four? Because I just think it's too low. Well, that'll be something we definitely look at, especially with. Uh, changing the MBE to 851. If we need to raise it up in order to get services to it, we will. So. Well, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to raise it up. From oh. The, or I don't think it's acceptable. Okay. That I'd have to take to the client. And everything. Right. Well, then I. Expensive. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't say yes on it tonight because of that. I, it should if be a problem. If you could tell us you could, then it could move forward. Oh, we definitely could. Unless you know, yeah. everybody else disagrees with me. So yeah. you know. no, we definitely could. I just have to just have to justify it. So yep. It's not a problem. So you definitely could means you will? <laughs> or you could. I'm gonna tell my boss that we, we need to raise it up in order to pass it. So yes, that would be fine. Okay, you you would agree to do that? Yeah. Okay. I will tell him that. You guys, okay. 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 Well, ours is just a recommendation too. Yeah. Um, but the city council can tell you no. Yep. I mean, we could pass on yep. with that recommendation, but I don't want you to get the city council and city council says, no. "Oh, wait a minute, let's yeah. start all over again." Okay. So, okay. I know at least one city councilman would probably agree with me. So. <laughs> Thank you. That's no problem. <clears throat> Recommendations here uh, listed, three recommendations, and <clears throat> that um, lot, uh, you know, additional recommendation that um, the front part of lot uh, on the street part of lot four be raised up to at least uh, equal the same build up or infill elevations that are on lot three next to it. 
and if also that um, the MBE on lot four uh, be brought up uh, above, uh, similar to lot three of 851.68, similar. So it's above the uh, flood plain. Can I make a suggestion just to say that the MBE on lot four will be adjusted to be consistent with the floodplain regulation? That's fine. I'll accept that. We'll second that motion. Okay. Hankins? Yes. Fogel? Yes. Triplet? No. Bowersox? Yes. Sires? Um, Thank you. Yes. Okay. Never heard anybody make a recommendation that they can say no. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if you heard me. Uh, Item number 10, Dear Heavy Urban Renewal. I'm going to move to triple. I'm going to dim the lights up here for you. Awesome. Okay. I got a very nice presentation, but I can't get it started. <laughs> Stand by. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is uh, dive into a little bit of the urban renewal law, which says that if a city is going to create an urban renewal area, URA, that we have to have an urban renewal plan for the URA. And that plan. Um, has to go through a series of consultation meetings, which we have with all taxing entities. And we also have to um, go to the Planning and Zoning Commission to um, get a recommendation that goes to Council. Council will be hearing this in, at a public hearing on the 28th of November. And what I'm going to do is I have to go back to Urban Renewal Area 1 to um, explain what's going on here. So we're going to kind of take both of them at the same time. Urban Renewal Area 1 is this area that is being traced by the, um, the little red dot. And this area allows the city to write certain TIF rebate agreements for developers. The urban renewal area that we are looking at specifically tonight, which is the Deerhaven one, and can I have you switch to Deerhaven? It should be the next slide is this area right here. Uh, we're going to cut that area out. That area currently is in urban renewal area two. And we're going to cut this area out. And we're going to create a new urban renewal area. Next slide. That would look like this. These are uh, the four lots are that you just looked at tonight. And this would be the urban renewal area. And note that this area goes up for these streets. The reason that we're looking at this as an urban renewal area is due to the fact that all of these utilities in here are sized back to um, basically the 1950s. 
Um, there's had sanitary sewer problems in here as it takes a 90, it takes another 90 as it goes down. The developer has agreed at his expense, as long as we are in a TIF agreement with him, to upgrade our sanitary sewer, our storm sewer, and water lines that are necessary in here, as well as, can I go to slide four, providing a bike trail, a 10-foot bike trail that they will pave, grade, and put into place. What you're seeing here is a plan that the council has been working on for some time, and this area right here is an urban renewal area too, but with the amendments that are being made uh, to that that the council will be hearing on the 28th, we'll be able to support a bike trail in a TIF agreement in the future. With that and the trailhead that is with the Neil Smith Trail at this location and the improvements that are being put in on Bridge Road, the only area that will not have the bicycle trail at this time will be the small area that's in purple here that is on the east side of Tyler. Otherwise, you will have from the West Church property line all the way through to approximately two and a half blocks from the town square, right there's town square, um, a bicycle trail. This has been a city um, project that they have looked to figure a way to do for quite some time. Can I go back to item um, the third? Yes. Um, there's enough money in this urban renewal area to be able for the city to pay the developer back for the upgrades that he is making on existing utilities, as well as going into these areas to make improvements with curb gutter, water, and storm sewer, as well as street paving. Um, staff is proposing that council accept this urban renewal area and um, be able to, once we get done with the rebate, to the developer in this area to start working on these streets. Um, this will be an urban renewal area that is housing only, so there's an LMI component as well as a 10-year sunset on the um, on any TIFs that are written in that area. But um, what we're looking tonight for is any um, comments that you would have on the plan that can be taken on to City Council. Can I ask a stupid question? Can you explain how TIF works? I mean, where does the money come from? Yes, I can. Excellent. And um, TIF is the, right now, there's a value trying to think of the best way to do this. No, There's a value in all this property. Sure. Um, the value on all of that property is approximately, if I remember my numbers correctly, about $28,000. And that would be as set by uh, Polk County Assessor's Office. That's called frozen value, frozen base. Where the taxes come, or where the money comes from, is any improvement that is made in that area, once it gets to a taxable value after you get to roll back and all of that, and I'm going to take you through that, um, that money, if it is not debt related, can go back to the city in a form of taxes from the county, and then 
those funds the city can turn around and disperse. And of course, we will be dispersing those funds through either a rebate or construction of items that the city wants to undertake. So let's take this a little easier. Um, a house is built in that location right there, and the I'm going to use simple numbers. The house is based on $200,000. That would give it a taxable value of approximately 110. And at $7.90 per <coughs> thousand, that would mean that the city would bring in approximately um, $800 on that lot per year. Under a TIF, everybody that is collecting, be it the county, be it DMAC, be it Broadlands Hospital, whatever, we get their tax rate. As long as it's not debt, we get their tax rate. So a tax rate of $40 per thousand, which this place would probably be paying, which would mean $4,440, now isn't going to those areas. They still are held whole by the values that were there. And for the next 10 years, the city captures those funds and makes improvements, public improvements. That's TIF 101. So essentially the developer is making these improvements at no cost to him or her? There, there is a cost to them. And what is that? That would be the infrastructure that they put in at our request. But aren't we rebating them back? Yes, we'll rebate them back. So they're not putting in their infrastructure, we're only paying them for the upgrade of the infrastructure. So if they need an eight and they put in a 24, we're paying for everything over that eight inch yeah. price. So they're still paying for their piece of the infrastructure. Yeah. We're rebating them for the upsizing to deal with, because we have mains that go through the whole town that come down there, so they're larger. So worst case scenario, if we didn't do this, wouldn't they have to still put in the, their sewer and whatever, right? Well, th they would, but they would come back to the city and ask for some type of assistance. And the best way that we can give them that assistance is this. City make any money on this? I'm sorry, Doug. Does the city make any money on this? No, not really. At the end of the day, uh, there will be funds to put back in to the what uh, we call the original part of town, which is in these areas right here, to make improvements. So we save money because we're using it someplace else where we wouldn't have had to spend it if we didn't have to. So we're making money? In a, in a roundabout okay, way, you can, you can say so it's that. A, it's a good thing because it helps everybody. Uh, it's, it's, it saves the, the taxpayers in Polk City <laughs> are able to utilize uh, values that have been created in the community to make improvements. It's, um, yeah, yeah, I was just trying to point out, you're, you're really, it's a benefit to the city because it's a benefit. Yeah. 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 Got a question? Go ahead. Also, if I remember correctly, on the TIFs we've done in the past, isn't there a bailout for them and for us if they don't meet a financial obligation, the TIF goes away? Yes. The improvements they've already put in are paid for by? They, they have the notes on it, so they would end up paying for it. Okay. So, so if, if they fail... Mm -hmm. in uh, their development agreement that would be passed after, of course, the plan is done. If those, if for some reason they fail, then they hold the bag. Um, developers don't want to fail in those situations. They really don't. 
I know, but they have here in they Falls have. City. We, We're batting about 500 on our, diff, our TIF projects in the past, I, I believe. And before I got here, yes, sir, we are. We had uh, Tyler from Crestmore or Hillcrest, whatever street that is up there, through to Washington was tiffed, those 11 or 12 houses. One of the first ones we did went real well. It paid out ahead of the 10-year program, so we were getting the taxes, all of the taxes back at about seven years, if I remember correctly. Wakansa up there, I'm going to call that northwest of the school, it didn't make it. It by 10 years it hadn't paid back the money that whatever the dollar figure was. So, if they don't make it, yeah, um, we we don't have any skin in the game. That that pretty much eliminates your risk. We just don't experience the benefit. Yeah, I'm still not convinced it's a benefit, but it does eliminate your risk. And we won't be bonding. Or anything, it's it's all in all a rebate regime. So let me ask this question again. We want it. We want, and I agree. I think curbs and updating the streets, especially in the old fire town, is great. And having the sewers and the um, storm drains. And maybe it's not important, but on the lots one, two, and three, and four tonight, we didn't care if they have curbs, and we don't care if they're storm drains, and we don't see where I'm going. Um, on lots one through four, there are drainage. The, the drainage is being handled there. Okay. And the backbone infrastructure of your water line and your sewer lines Either they're already in existence along that frontage, or they're not really serving a larger community benefit. In the case of Plat 1, your trunk sewer that handles most of Polk City runs through that parcel, and that infrastructure was built in the 60s? I think it was the 60s. And it's, it's old clay line. It's really, really flat. The pipe runs very full. Um, so it was creating capacity issues and maintenance issues, and it was getting at the end of its life. So it needed to be replaced anyway. Mm -hmm. So there is a larger community benefit to fix that sewer, to extend the water lines and loop them. There's even a community benefit to having these streets interconnect so that we're not plowing on a dead end street. Oh, I'm all for yeah. That. So, Absolutely. but but on this other one, I just I don't really foresee East Broadway going through again. East Broadway cannot go through because we'll never be able to bridge the Corps of Engineers and, property. And we wouldn't. Yeah, and we that land won't redevelop, and it probably won't be used for like park access or. So it is kind of a dead end street and maybe doesn't serve that larger community benefit. Um, right now, if you drive down there, the old highway, you can still see it. It's underwater right now. Yeah. It's surrounded by a swamp on both sides. So. I used to walk on that one. That's yeah. Frozen. I drove down there just yesterday morning see what was going on. On lots one, two, three, and four, isn't the drainage better handled if there aren't curb and gutters? Most likely, because, yes. Yeah, because of the ditches and stuff, and that's that's what I thought the reason. And it's all, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a rural section and going to stay yeah. that way, so. And with just four lots and not expanding the pavement through there, you, you don't really probably need any stormwater detention, and the fact that you're right next to the biggest stormwater detention facility in Polk City. Uh, you know, it's kind of ridiculous to do those sort of improvements. 
Over the years, there have been lots of sewer problems down there in the original part of town, backups, everything. That 100-year flood that comes every five years or so, <laughs> it causes those problems. And we've had people with file claims against us. There's just been a lot of stuff going on. Because the way I understand it, it helped me out here, we're running a 12-inch line or whatever it is, whatever our, whatever it is, goes down there and it goes into an 8-inch line. Is that correct? It's There's a small a, line. I can't remember. Yeah. It's, it's a 10-inch clay line right now, mm, but if okay, we replace so. it with a 10-inch plastic line and lay it at a consistent grade, mm -hmm. your capacity is improved by about 60%. Just yeah. because it's so much smoother. Um, is that the plan, a 10-inch one? Mm -hmm. So instead of an 8-inch, they're upsizing to a 10, and we had them do some upgrades to manhole sizes to improve the flow characteristics and maintenance concerns. Another good example is when Parker was, or not Parker, Broadway was redone from the school southeast or whatever direction that is up there. We had lots of sewer problems along there. And we went in at that time with help from the county and help from the state when we did, redid Broadway and straightened out a lot of those sewer lines. And as far as I know, I hate to say anything, I don't think we've had any problems since that happened. With we went all the way up to um, past Bennett. We, um, it was almost Lindell. Um, it was both big, but not quite that far. I can't think of the name of the street right now. But um, And then started a parallel sewer that we also captured that area that was on Bluff and Second. Because uh, that was part of the problem too, because mm -hmm. we went all the way back to where Walnut used to be and then came around. And that was causing us issues further upstream. And we made improvements down here on East Broadway too. Yes. I can't remember what they were. and We ran into a lot of things in the ground, but nobody knew we were there. Mm -hmm. yep. That's that parallel sewer as we well. We constructed yeah. the Interceptor in 2008, 2006, something like that. Eight, I think. It's, I, I got to shut up. I'll get in trouble over this. Mm -hmm. I get reprimanded for talking too much at these meetings. It's the only way we learn. I'm not supposed to influence you folks. Oh. Well, you're a resource. That's oh, all you're yeah. doing. Well, and that's that's mostly what I try to do is give history. Yeah. Well, thanks, good. I sometimes wonder how old you really are. <laughs> Some I know. <laughs> Some days I feel a whole lot older than what I am. I know we haven't resolved the whole parky park issue when developers come in. But this is a perfect example of unusable parkland for us. So that bugs me. And I know that when he was developing the other lots, the fact that he was going to put in the bike trail, we were supposed to give him extra credit for that or whatever this, or she or she or whomever this is. But yet, now we're paying for the bike trail. We were always paying for the bike trail. Oh. That's yeah. around. He's just giving us the, the easement of it. Yeah. It's kind of like all the parks, they don't put anything in them, they just give you yeah. the space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just my two cents worth. Another question. I can, answer, I can ask it now or I can answer this council meeting. In the case of where these people, instead of ground, they're dedicating some cash now. We have to spend the cash in that area. Yes, that is correct. That's, Can we that's use small. that cash to pave whatever we'll do on those trails? We can. As long as it goes back to, um, you know, a park type use. Okay. 
asked one more question on the LMI. Um, it just gave, listed a bunch of options. Do you know what the intent will be? Do not. Um, we receive or did receive LMI from the TCI uh, when when that was under there's not much of TCI left unless you're in orchard um, in the orchard lane area I, I believe that's still um, getting some LMI funds and still getting some TIF funds um, the um, there's a lot of different things that we're looking at, and uh, one of them is uh, down payment assistance. Um, to get them away from a higher rate and possibly a lower rate. Um, we're um, exploring to see if um, there's a way that we can undertake that. things have to fall into place to make it work. Any other questions? The, uh, what is it you're needing from us? A recommendation that goes on to City Council. Um, that recommendation will be made part of the, um, the proceedings that evening. Recommending that it should be Considered, or I mean, I'm not sure that we. I recommend any are recommending the creation of the URA, the Deer Haven Urban Renewal Area. A recommendation that we think it's the concept is sound. Sound. Okay. Take notes. <laughs> I'm going to report back. The problem is, I, as since Krista pointed out, how old I am. No, you didn't. No, I, didn't. I take notes and I, I leave say. them all. She knows, so she must be older than you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no. Good hair. <laughs> Just like when I was in school, I always left my homework home then, too. Well, I think you're younger than I am because I retired before you did. So. Yeah, I, I, I work past retirement. So did I. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I believe I am. Step. I have nothing. All right. Commission report. Oh, I have a couple of things. Okay. <laughs> uh, one is related to the uh, Lost Lakes sidewalk along uh, Broadway. Uh, when we did not give them the exemption for putting in the sidewalk, it was my belief that they'd probably have the developer of each lot do it and then they'd come back at the end of the day, three years down the road, and fill in the pieces. Uh, they overachieved and they installed the sidewalk for plat three and four. So that's part of the infrastructure that's already in there. Uh, that now means that we have a sidewalk to nowhere uh, in that the sidewalk on the south end of Platte 3 and 4 goes into the Lost Lake Park, which does not have a sidewalk, and then the sidewalk starts again at Falcon, I guess it would be. So I guess my question is, uh, 
if we would want to have a sidewalk through the park, does that come through? Question number one, is that a park funding item or is it just a sidewalk that is required on city land and does it come out of the city fund? Um, it can be viewed in a matter of different ways. It can be viewed as a road use tax issue. In other words, road use tax would pay for the sidewalk. It could be viewed as a park item. Um, it can be viewed as part of the general development of the city and put under uh, general taxes to complete. There's a variety of different ways that that a stretch can be accomplished. The, the reason we push the developer to go ahead and do that is there's been a initiative, if you will, by the council to make sure that we have sidewalks that get to the school, and uh, we take that that we take that charge very seriously. So if we have the ability to get that done until such time as we have the funds to complete the sidewalk, being the gap, it, it makes it a lot easier, especially when we own that land that's the gap. Yeah. So uh, I guess my point would be is could that be moved up in the process since, uh, and, and granted when I say moved up, there's no houses up there now, uh, but they'll start coming in next spring and it would be, you know, helpful that by midsummer or late summer of next year that we would at least have a plan in place to fill that gap. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's not coming, not necessarily coming out of park funds. There were some monies dedicated, but I would hope that, that those monies go to something different than a sidewalk that needs to be put in, in my opinion, by the city outside of the park fund. The council has um, the ultimate authority in those areas, and uh, again, we will take our charge from the city council. So that's my uh, item number one. Item number two is uh, related to the uh, the land that we recently annexed north of Hug Drive near uh, near Big Creek Park. Yes. Uh, right on the western edge of. Uh, Hug Drive on the north side, abutting Big Creek Park in that parcel, is a large building going in. I can't tell it, but I assume it's maybe just a very large house. The it building permit for a house and an attached garage was... It appears to be in where our comprehensive plan is showing a major arterial road being built as that would have been platted. And, uh, you know, we, on our comprehensive plan, essentially from that intersection, we were showing a major arterial coming and going over to the interstate. But that's right smack in the way of where that road <laughs> is going to be. And uh, the, the question is, is what do we do about it? You know, where well, is this road those, gonna go? <laughs> those lines aren't. Precise. They aren't precise, but we were shooting for an intersection that it was going to go into that's already there. When he starts to subdivide, which will be this winter, spring, um, we'll bring that more into focus. Um, he will still have to put a road, whether it's an extra <coughs> hundred feet to the north or an extra hundred feet to the south, or one way or the other, he'll still have to put that in. And he's aware of that. No, nope, that sounds good. So I, uh, I was a little, when I saw where it was, I mean, it's directly, Hug Drive kind of angles to the south a little bit now, and where, where he's building is directly east of that intersection. And so the, our new arterial is going to have to you know, maybe follow the hub alignment for a bit before it heads over, but uh, I was uh, I was believing we'd probably see a site plan before any construction would go in there, but I guess since it's the only house on that entire it's, parcel that can be Yeah, done. he hasn't subdivided now. He's going to have to take that in consideration when he does subdivide now. 
Fakat that off my chest. Well, I didn't have anything that none of you were talking. I just thought something. <laughs> um, I wrote you an email some time ago about um, uh, state laws stop at pedestrian walkways. Is mm -hmm. there any progress on that? Um, it's been looked at. We will continue to look at that when we get new traffic counts. We'll be in that area looking for traffic signal warrants here probably in a year's time. Um, the um, information on um, the warning sign and how it works uh, was given to our public works director and he is looking into it. Is it going to take another year to do this? I can't say that it will take a year, but I mean it's we're, we're, ga come, we're gathering the information. Any signs don't come. It, you know, it doesn't matter how many cars go by a place. It's traffic counts, it's all a bunch of crap. These are pedestrian walkways that you have marked, and people don't stop at them for the kids, especially around schools. And they don't stop for them for the adults either. And if you walk like where I walk and see those things happen all the time, nobody stops. If, if I remember correctly, this is the area on uh, South 3rd Street, Highway 415. Well, there's two of them. One's by the school, and yeah, and the other one's out, out there, which I know you've been doing work out there. And nobody even sees the signs now because they're so far away, quite frankly. I mean, they're clear off because the road's so wide now, you don't even see the signs to stop for people. And people don't stop there anyway. I've seen people waiting, and I've stopped, and they just kind of looked at me like, I don't know, what's that idiot? Nobody stops, you know. But these are simple little signs. If anybody wants to see them, they're all over the DMAC campus. And they don't cost very much. And you put them right on the poles that you already have. And, uh, you know, I, I could never work for the bureaucracy. That's why I had my own firm. I could never work for anybody else. Because I, I just do stuff when I know it's important. And something safety is very important. And I think something's going to happen someday. And the reason I want to bring this up again, uh, it was kind of just between you and me for a while, but um, we put, you put those, used to put the signs up, you know. Well, people aren't used to, people are used to driving through that at the school. And when you put a sign up, there are a lot of people, if they're not used to it, they don't see it. And I about got hit in my car the other day because uh, I had stopped, turned, I want to turn left into Oakwood Drive. And I started to turn, this pickup truck just whizzed right on through those stop lines, those stop signs. So I really think the city council needs to consider just making that a permanent four-way stop. I mean, somebody, I mean, I got hit in the car, I probably wouldn't have got hurt too bad, but um, I mean, there's a lot of kids that cross. And, and the kids are, kids are afraid of those areas too. I mean, they, they're smart enough to know that there's people aren't going to stop for them, which is good. But not everybody's like that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I just think you need to move forward on some safety items, especially when it has a safety of life. And let, you know, let's do something about some of these things before something happens. You know, I, I'm just not a person who wait for a study. I just go ahead and do it. You know, and it's so little cost to do that. But when I saw the pickup go through, I wanted to bring it up again, and I really think that you might want to consider making that a permanent four-way stop up there. It's not a big deal. And people speed through there anyway. They all go 50 miles an hour. Are you talking on Broadway? I'm talking on Broadway and right at the school there yeah, at yeah. Oakwood. Yeah. No. I, I know. I was in front of my life for about 12 years up there. <clears throat> and there was a time, of course, at the end, I didn't because I was getting off at 2.30, when it was real bad. In the spring, especially when it seemed to get more traffic, there was more kids walking. It wasn't my job, nobody told me to, but I'd go out and walk them across that street. Which I thought, well, I'm doing something, but I don't know if that's a big help because they didn't stop for me either. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. No, I agree, something it, needs to be it, done. It's really dangerous, <coughs> and I, you know, I, I, the study's fine and all that, but it doesn't matter how many cars go through there. But it takes one. I think there's options out there. I guess I'd be hesitant to do a permanent four-way stop there. If you get those unwarranted stop signs all over, a lot of times they're going to cause more trouble. I mean, you can see all the studies out there. People will run them if they're 
they're not really warranted, and then you've got that false sense of security out there. But I'm not saying I think there is a solution out there. I guess I don't know that I put stop signs up. Well, there's flashing lights too. Yeah, something you know, like that. I think. Yeah, there's there's it. different things. Mm -hmm. if, if people are used to stopping them all the time and they travel out and they do it, and, but they're not used to stopping at three o'clock in the afternoon or right. eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. When other times they just drive through there, and and the I won't mention the gender in the pickup, uh, but she was talking on the phone doing it too when she was going through yeah, there. No, well, and it's twenty five and, and I, Men do it too. It wasn't yeah. just that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hollered at some construction guys in a truck. We ran right through that light for that stop sign one morning, and I hollered at them. They fingered me. Did you finger them back? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm above all that. I'm above all that now. There was a time in my life when I probably would have followed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. I just wish you'd move forward with yeah. something, especially around the school. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the people that you have crossing them out there, uh, it, that's harder on them even yet now because it's farther to go and, you know, people are in a hurry. Just that. I've always wanted to make this four-way stop right out here at this corner, but I can't, nobody else does. Wasn't it yeah. at one point? Yeah, Didn't when, when there was some construction, construction going on or something, we had it. That's on the driveway was under construction. <laughs> and in and, and answer to Ron, if we get sidewalks going up there and they quit for a while, I'm sure the city's going to, that's going to have to take priority. We're going to have to, if that's what happens, we're going to have to step in and do something. At least in my thinking. Anything you do on third has to be cleared through DOT, though, right? Third Street is DOT, uh, Broadway is county. Okay, so you have to fight through those. I got to fight through all the bureaucracy. They won't let you put just anything up here. So. Yeah, the, the flashing lights uh, at both those locations are probably the one. Yeah, I like that idea. And I think there is flashing lights. Mm -hmm. There is a. Uh, is there? To school. And is there? It's yeah. Seeing the breakaway part. signs in the middle yeah. of the road too, that just you know that are plastic. Uh, on the yellow line that say, you know, stop in a crosswalk, kind of, but it just kind of draws attention to there being something yeah, there. A lot of times those need to be taken out in the winter, uh, so they're more of a spring-fall thing, but at least it lets people, reminds people that they're there. Well, you can't put anything into the roads, I've been told. <laughs> yeah, snow plows. Right yeah, they are in the winter. Both the flashing lights are Maybe they don't work. A police officer. They, they fly, and I forget what the hours are. They flash up there for an yeah. hour and a half in the morning and yeah. an hour and a half in the afternoon, yeah. I believe. And Northbrook doesn't have crossing guards, either. do they? Pardon? They don't have a crossing guard there, do they? No, they've never had a crossing guard. Maybe that'd be something, too. Well, yeah. if they don't stop for him, they're not going to stop for him. Last her. time that was discussed, the school's question was, will you pay for it, no. the meaning the city? And when the city told them, no, we probably won't, then their question was, will you, will you pay for half of it? And it kind of just died. I would think well, it'd be the school's responsibility, too. Pardon? I, w I would think it'd be the school's responsibility. Is there a In most cities, it is. Yeah. In most <laughs> school districts, it is. For a crossing guard. Yeah, for a crossing guard. But the streets, the cities. Yes. <coughs> so who we, what about with a police officer? Well, I don't do it when the police are sitting there. I know. <laughs> so if they're there before and after school, I'm I, just saying. But, I mean, we have a lot of crosswalks. Or, I mean, we have two on Parker. And there's yeah, quite a few. Yeah. And, I, and I've stopped there and had people drive by me in the other lane. Yeah. And that's dangerous because you stop. You stop. Yeah, the kid walks out in front of you and the other car doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's illegal to pass school buses. It's not school buses. They uh, and there and then there are those real conscientious people that I've seen stop before I even get the stop sign out. You know, I'm headed out to put the stop sign out, and, and there's those conscientious people that come to complete stop anyway. I always figured they were probably people that had kids in school up there. Well, I just hope you can move on. Sorry to take up more time, but I just hope you move on with something before somebody gets hurt. Somebody's already been hurt. 
right? Yeah, yeah. Any other commission report? If not, motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.